Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer for Wednesday, July 29th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Let your steadfast love come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Then shall I have an answer for him who taunts me, for I trust in your word. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for my hope is in your rules. I will keep your law continually, forever and ever. I shall walk in a wide place, for I have sought your precepts. I will also speak of your testimonies before kings, and shall not be put to shame. For I, my delight is in your commandments, which I love. I will lift up my hands toward your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statutes. Our Old Testament reading today is from 1 Samuel chapters 14 and 15. When Saul had taken the kingship over Israel, he fought against all his enemies on every side, against Moab, against the Ammonites, against Edom, against the king, kings of Zobah, and against the Philistines. Wherever he turned, he routed them. And he did valiantly and struck the Amalekites and delivered Israel out of the hands of those who plundered them. Now the sons of Saul were Jonathan, Ishvi, and Malchishua. And the names of his two daughters were these. The name of the firstborn was Merab, and the name of the younger was Michal. And the name of Saul's wife was Ahinoam, the daughter of Ahimaaz. And the name of the commander of his army was Abner, the son of Ner, Saul's uncle. Kish was the father of Saul, and Ner, the father of Abner, was the son of Abiel. There was hard fighting against the Philistines all the days of Saul, and when Saul saw any strong man or any valiant man, he attached him to himself. And Samuel said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people Israel. Now therefore listen to the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I have noted what Amalek did to Israel in imposing them on the way when they came up out of Egypt. Now go and strike Amalek and devote to destruction all that they have. Do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. So Saul summoned the people and numbered them in Telaim, 200,000 men on foot and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to the city of Amalek and lay in wait in the valley. Then Saul said to the Kenites, Go, depart, go down among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For you showed kindness to all the people of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. And Saul defeated the Amalekites from Havilah as far as Shur, which is east of Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and devoted to destruction all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatted calves and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. All that was despised and worthless they devoted to destruction. Our writing this morning is from Veit Dietrich. I believe we've heard from him before. Uh, Veit Dietrich was a uh, confidant of Martin Luther. He was a young student at the University of Wittenberg and actually attended there for what we would, have, would call today high school. Uh, he died very early at the age of 42, but he was the editor of uh, Luther's Lectures on Genesis, uh, which is the first five volumes of his works in English. And he also... Uh, was the editor and recorder of a part of the table talk. So if you've ever wondered how did Luther have time to write so much, a lot of it was recorded by people that were close to him. Uh, they wrote down every word he said, uh, including the table talk, which has got a lot of good, interesting stuff. 
uh, and some of it's kind of funny. So uh, Veit Dietrich is known uh, for that. He was a gifted student of theology, and later he was offered a professorship, but he turned it down. And he says, Beloved Christians, the godly have their manner, and it is a good manner. The evil also have their characteristic, and it is an evil characteristic. The life of Christians is that they alone believe what is written about Christ in the Law of Moses and in the Prophets. Next, that they through Christ hope in the resurrection of the dead and eternal life, and in addition, that they practice and earnestly strive to have a good conscience everywhere, both toward God through faith in Christ and toward men through blameless conduct. The life of the godless, on the other hand, is that they are terribly afraid of the preaching of the Holy Gospel and would rather not know it, lest it produce a heavy conscience. Next, that they are secure and have hope that everywhere and in all things they may enjoy the benefits of the people and their prayers. Moreover, they conduct themselves and use their office in such a way that they do not lose the world's favor. God grant that all of us, both authorities and subjects, flee the vices of the children and rulers of the world, and instead follow the manner of God's children and the Lord God's authorities, that we may forsake the evil and do the good, and thus have God's favor and blessing, and live for his honor and for the welfare of every man, until death and our entrance into heaven. Amen. Today is the day in the Lutheran Church when we commemorate the lives of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus of Bethany. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus of Bethany were disciples with whom Jesus had a special bond of love and friendship. John's Gospel records that Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, John 11:5. On one occasion, Martha welcomed Jesus into their home for a meal. While Martha did all the work, Mary sat at Jesus' feet, listening to his word, and was commended by Jesus for choosing the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Luke 10, 38-42 When their brother Lazarus died, Jesus spoke to Martha this beautiful gospel promise, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. John eleven twenty five. Ironically, when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, the Jews became determined more than ever to kill Jesus. John 11, 39-54 Six days before Jesus was crucified, Mary anointed his feet with a very expensive, fragrant oil and wiped them with her hair, not knowing at the time that she was doing it in preparation for Jesus' burial. John 12, 1-8, Matthew 26, 6-13 we now join in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And as always on Wednesdays, our Wednesday prayer is the Shorter Litany. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us, spare all the dying. From all sin, from all evil, from the devil's might, from the devil's wiles, from your wrath and from hell's torment, from sudden and evil death, good Lord, deliver them. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the grace of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, help them, good Lord. In the hour of death, on the day of judgment, help them, good Lord. 
We poor sinners implore you to hear us, good Lord, to comfort all the dying, to forgive them all their sins, to lead them out of this misery into eternal life. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, your beloved Son befriended fail, frail humans like us to make us your own. Teach us to be like Jesus' dear friends from Bethany, that we might serve him faithfully like Martha, learn from him earnestly like Mary, and ultimately be raised by him like Lazarus. Through their Lord and ours, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.